French cleats are awesome, but sometimes the insulation process can be a little bit long and daunting. So I'm going to show you a great tool that you can make in your shop to make this process a lot easier and a lot faster. That way you can get organizing your shop much quicker. Now for this build, I'm going to be using some thin plywood. This is probably five millimeter or quarter inch. You want something that's really strong, but also has a, the ability to flex just a little bit, and that should do well. We're going to take this over to the table saw, and we're going to cut this down into a strip of about three inches. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be exactly three inches, but I found that if you go wider than that, it's a little hard to handle, and if it's thinner than that, it might have a little too much flex. Now to get this tool to work correctly, we're actually going to need two of them. So instead of just building one at a time, we're going to build two side by side. That way we can make sure all the dimensions and the measurements are exactly the same. Next we need to take a small piece of fringe cleat. This would probably be one of those you stick on the back of one of your holders. We want to measure it out and cut it to the same width as each of these little tools. Now of course, make two of these. Next step is to secure the little French cleat to the top of our holder. We need to make sure they're exactly flush against the top here. That way when they're both hanging, there's zero difference. And I'm just gonna add a couple brad nails for extra security. It's now time to take the French cleats that we're gonna use and we want to space them out. Maybe on a tabletop or if they're really large, on the floor. And then we need to determine the spacing we want in between each of these. Some people like them really wide, some people like them really narrow, that is totally up to you. In any case, figure out the distance you want in these, then take a measuring tape and you want to measure this up and write that number down so we don't forget it. Now while the cleats are laying out, we want to take the tool that we've been working on, we want to place it on the top cleat that's going to be on the top of your wall here. We want to take a, make a little mark on the back of the cleat then take your measuring tape and figure out the distance that we determined earlier for the spacing. Make a next little mark. Then we want to align that second cleat and then make a mark for the bottom here. And we're just going to proceed with that process all the way down so we know exactly the distance we want in between each of these cleats. Now if you've already installed some other French cleats and you like that style like I do in this metal building, sorry for the echo here, you just want to take your tool and you want to stick it on one of the top cleats. And then you want to just take a pencil and make a mark exactly where the bottom of your following cleats are. You don't necessarily have to worry about the top in this instance, you just want to make sure you know exactly where the bottom is. Now at this point we want to take all those marks we did on the front of our tool and we want to transfer them to the back. In this case here I'm just using a combination square because we want it to be nice and level going all the way across and we're just going to draw a mark. Now that we have all the little marks in place, we need to create some little bumpers or shelves that'll go right along these marks. And to do that, we wanna make sure we use the same thickness material as the French cleats. Now when we go to install these, we need to make sure that the edge of this little shelf here will line up exactly along the edge of the bottom side of that mark. Now there are a couple ways to install these little shelves. First, you could use glue and make it permanent. Or you could use a couple brad nails in each one. And that is good just in case you decide you want to change the distance in between all of your cleats, maybe in different spots around your shop or your house. And now that the tool is ready to use, I'm going to go out and install this first French cleat on the very top exactly where I want it, make sure it's nice and level, and then I'll show you exactly how the tool works. Always remember when you're adding French cleats to your wall to make sure you know exactly where the studs are so you can insert the screws all the way through your French cleat through the wall into the studs. That's where it gets most of its strength. Once you have your top cleat in place and it's nice and level and secure to the wall, take your new tool and you want to hang one on the front side or left side and one on the right side. And this should allow you to flex just a little bit so that you can insert the next cleat. Now on one end, you probably will be able to just slide your French cleat in place, and the other one, you'll probably have to pull your tool out just a little bit and slide it up behind it, like this. Now the second cleat is exactly level as the first one. Now you can go in, make sure it is even on the side so it's not all jagged going in and out, probably with a straight edge or maybe that level we were using earlier. And then we can go in, pre-drill these holes and add those screws. And you can do that in a third and fourth cleat really quickly with this system.
When you finally get to that last screw in your French cleats, you can now gently pull on your tool and it should separate the shelves from the French cleats they were holding and then you can gently lift up and remove them out of the way. And now you can have all of your French cleats at the same spacing throughout your workshop. Now that is a great tool to have whenever you're trying to install French cleats and it's so easy to make. Now, I have a couple of other options you might want to consider. If you're going to have your French cleats a lot closer together, there's a chance that it might be a little more difficult to pull this out from below the French cleat that it's holding. So another option would be to actually hook up a hinge system on your wood. Now, of course, these screws are a little bit too long, but I'm just trying to show you that you can do a very similar setup with the shelves and everything, but with a hinge. And that way, once you're done, you can pull this out of the way and it should lift off a little bit easier. And one more option you might want to consider is if you have a CNC machine, you could possibly even cut this out with maybe some three quarter inch material and see how well that works. I'm not sure how well it'll flex when you're trying to pull it out, but it's just another option you can consider. Now, if you want more ideas for French cleats, I have a playlist right over here with literally hundreds of ideas just for you.